continuing on with quadratic parameter change, I'm going to now look at x squared, the parent function, and the second function of negative x squared. Um, and I'm going to go back to what happened when we did that, when we did the absolute value, and what happened when we did that. And remember that this was the absolute value and this was the absolute value. And one had a minimum and one had a maximum. It's going to do the same thing. So we're going to have the parent function and this negative is going to reflect it across the x-axis and it's going to open downward. Okay, so this negative right here in front of the x squared is going to um, how does uh, y equals x squared uh, change? When it goes to negative x squared, it um, opens down. And it flips. And it reflects over the x-axis. And remember, we had to describe the parameter changes of absolute values. You're going to have to have, you have another assignment that you're going to have to describe the parameter change. So whenever you have a negative in front of the x squared, these are the three uh, acceptable answers of how that negative affects uh, y equals x squared. Okay, now if you'll remember, this is the parent function and y equals absolute value of x plus 3 and we had this move things up Three. Same thing. This is how nice it is, is because your quadratic parameter changes actually follow the same guidelines as your absolute value parameter changes, which is nice because in Algebra 2, when you change a lot of functions, a lot of parameter changes, all you have to do is learn one and we keep going. So y equals x squared parent function y equals x squared plus 5. All it does is move the vertex up. So this goes up 5. It's still the same function. So it's going to look different in your calculator, especially if it cuts it off like that. You're going to want to answer wider or narrower. Please don't. That plus 5, all it does is take this entire parent function and move it up five spaces. And then when you have y, y equals x squared minus five, it moves the parent function down five. And remember, up and down always follows the directions that it looks like. So how does it change? If it is a positive, it moves up. If it is a negative, it moves down. So y equals ax squared plus or minus k. If there's a negative out in front of it, it is a uh, flips or reflects. If the a is a larger than one, it makes it narrower. If it is less than one, it makes it wider. If it is adding a number at the back side, it is moving it up. If it is subtracting, it is moving it down. So now you have some equations and you're going to have to figure out what the, um, what the, you have some graphs and you're going to have to find out the equation. So remember when I said that on the parent function, the nice thing is, is this is 1, 1, and this is 2, 4, and we go out 1 and up 3. I'm going to check that each time because that's going to help me. So I'm going to put a dot here, and I'm going to put a dot here because that would be the parent function, okay? That would be the parent function, and I'm going to just draw this because that's going to help me. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out here and I'm going to do one and I'm going to do here. And I'm going to go here. And so if you notice this blue right here, I got whiter. Okay. And if I look at this value at one, my value is a half. Well, when did we have that value as a half? We had that value of a half. If I plug in the value of one and it spits out a half, we can pull out this chart and remember when I plugged in a one and got a half, it was y equals one half x squared. So this is y equals one half x squared. Now, you also know that from the parent function, the graph got wider. So you know it's going to be a fraction. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do one, one, and then I'm going to do two, four. Okay, so that's my parent function. It is narrower. So A is larger than one. Okay, so A is larger than one. I'm going to go here and I'm going to put here and here. And so at one, it became two. And at two, it became eight. When my parent function is actually, this is new, my parent function is one and four. That's my parent function, and now it became 2 and 8, which means I multiply. It became uh, narrower. Okay, this became narrower than the blue. And so it is y equals 2x squared. Okay, next one. I'm going to do, I'm going to, from the vertex, one up, one right, and then I'm going to go, I'm pretending that this is zero, zero, and then I'm going to go, that's one up, one right, that's two, one, two, three, four, and that, so it hit, so right here is that one, three, so that, it is following the parent function, so there is not a wider but the vertex is no longer at the origin, it dropped down two. Okay, here I'm going to go, okay, it's reflect. So y equals negative x squared, I know that part. I'm gonna go one right, one right, one down. That's my one, one. That's my one and three, so it is a parent function reflected. And that means the vertex instead of here went up, so that is plus two. So you're gonna have to check this one three and notice on this one, it became wider. On this one, it, it became narrower. It came inside the blue dots. This one came outside the blue dots. This one stayed, that one three is still there, so it's still a parent function. That one three is still there, so it's a parent function. Okay, so um, to me, it, it was always interesting when I taught a block algebra class, y equals x squared, it smiles, opens up. y equals negative x squared, when you're negative, you frown, has a max. This has a min, this has a max. So one of the ways you can do it is if it's a frown, it's got to have a negative, a leading negative. 
that is 14-4 graphing y equals ax squared and y equals x squared plus or minus k parameter changes of quadratic equations.